Sevilla are a big name in Spanish football. They've been Spanish champions once and won the Europa League five times now after beating Roma in the final last year. But right now they're not having a very good season as they are currently mid-table in the league and they are sitting bottom of their Champions League group stage yet to register a single win. But today boys, we're going to sort that out. As I'm going to become the new manager of Sevilla with the goal of making them the best team in the world. So this is the team I've loaded into with Sevilla and if you guys know your players in FC24, you'll know instantly one big problem with this squad. It is an incredibly old team and the worst part is majority of the oldest players in this team are the best players we've got on the team. And another thing is majority of our best players do have release clauses added into their contracts so that's yet another thing we've got to look out for going forward. But whilst this team has got its flaws, there's definitely a couple of players we can build this team around. We've got Belgian winger Dudy Lukbakia who's only 25 years old, 79 rated and as you can see his status is he's got something special. There's front and centre back Luke Bader who's right now not exactly the player we need but maybe potentially in a couple of seasons time we could slot him into that starting 11. And we have Moroccan striker Youssef Inesri who's only 26 years old, already 82 overall but there is one problem with these three players. You guessed it boys, every single one of them has a release clause in their contract so making sure that we keep hold of these players is going to be pretty tricky going forward. So overall boys we've inherited a very aging team with a lot of players who've got release clauses in their contracts man it's going to be pretty difficult this one is. But as for the formation I'm going to keep it as it is I really do like the 4-3-3 attacking variation and I'm going to use the counter attacking tactical vision we've got a bucket load of pace in our front three and I think hitting the teams on the counter attack is going to be our best option and we do have 47 million to spend in season one and in hindsight that is a pretty decent sum of money to use but with the rule we've got it's not going to be that useful. I'm only allowed to buy players by activating their release clause. Now to you guys that might not sound too bad but believe me it's a lot more difficult than you think. Take a player like a Ritz Elastondo he's 29 years old 80 overall his contract's running out meaning we'll get him way less than his market value with 19 and a half million but if we want to buy him we've got to pay 42.4 million to activate his release clause meaning we're going to be paying well over double for Elastondo. So whilst 47 million is a decent amount of money it is nowhere near enough for us to improve the squad like I want to this season. Now like I've already said we have got a lot of aging players in the starting 11 and I think we're gonna have to sort that out straight away. So I am putting these four players on the transfer list. We won't get much for them don't get me wrong but at least we'll get something for them. And on top of that I'm learning out a couple of players as well. These guys won't get into the team now but hopefully when they come back they'll have a decent shot at it. And after selling a few of these players we've now got 70 million in our budget and that is a little bit better than just over 40 million. But the question is now boys where do we actually put this money? Now I was considering getting a better right back than Jesus Navas purely because he is retiring at the end of this season. But then I remember we've got Gonzalo Montiel on loan to Nottingham Forest and all we've got to do is bring him back off his loan move. And that leads me to Ramos. Granted he's 83 overall but he's the same age as Jesus Navas man. We've got to prepare for the future and I guarantee you by the end of this season he'll have dropped massively in overall. And it's the same situation with Rakitic. He's 81 rated but he's 35 years old. He's in his mid 30s for goodness sake. If we can manage to sort out a centre back and a centre midfielder I'm happy to leave the rest of the team as it is going into season 1. But even with 70 million in our budget I've still got a feeling we're going to massively struggle to sort these positions out. But I have found a decent centre back Joseph Aidu is 27 years old 79 rated and as you can see his release clause is 40.2 million and that we can definitely afford. But I cannot believe I'm about to spend over 40 million on a 79 rated player. This challenge is going to be so difficult. But boys I bit the bullet I activated his release clause and now Joseph Aidu is playing for Sevilla. And that leaves us with 28 million in our budget to find a midfielder and I'll be real boys I don't think that's going to be enough. But boys I've struck gold here. Pablo Barrios is 20 years old already 74 overall and to activate his release course it'll cost just over 20 million. Now I know paying 20 million for a 74 rated player is expensive but long term I absolutely think this will be worth it. And with the signing of the wonder kid from Atletico Madrid I believe that is our transfer window done. And that leaves the team looking like this going into season one and to be honest I'm happy with how the team looks. I think we're going to do pretty well in La Liga and I think we're going to do pretty well in the Champions League but that's not my concern. My concern is majority of our best players will undoubtedly improve quite a bit by the end of this season and normally that's a good thing but in this case it really isn't. Majority of them have got release clauses on their contracts and whilst their market value is going to go up that release clause is going to stay put. So my worry with this team isn't how we're going to do in the league and domestic clubs or in the European competitions it's how many of these players are actually going to be our players by the end of this season. 
Now we are of course in Group B alongside Arsenal, PSV and RC Lens in the Champions League. And to be honest boys, for Season 1, I'm really not fussed how we're doing the Champions League. All I want is a half decent season in La Liga and I'll be happy. Now we are at the end of Season 1 and incredibly our budget's only 14 million, which does mean, if I'm not mistaken, nobody's release clause is being activated. Our most recent transfer was back in July with the loan of Sanchez. Boys, we have been so goddamn lucky. And then over to the league, we finished 5th at the end of this season. We were a solid 16 points behind league leaders Barcelona, but you know what? I'll definitely take fifth place. We did pretty well on the Copa de España team, making the quarterfinals only losing to RC Celta. And whilst we did lose 3 2 to City in the Super Cup final, we gave them a serious run for their money. As for the Champions League, we just about managed to get through to the round of 16 by the skin of our teeth. That, I'm not going to lie, is not a good sign for the knockouts. But we faced Benfica in the round of 16 when we absolutely annihilated them 4 1 on aggregate. And we get our Revenge on Man City in the quarterfinals, beating them 4 3 on aggregate as well. Boys, this is mental. Barcelona by Munich, Dortmund are left. Oh, boys, this may be the end of the journey here, though. Unfortunately, I was right. Dortmund batter us 3 1 in the semi finals, but considering how they're doing it in real life, this is a massive W. And just look at the team, boys. We have been so lucky this year. Not only has nobody's release clause been activated, our team has massively improved. And it's clear who our best players were this year 24 and 15 for Ocampos, and 24 and 2 for for Yusuf and Nesri. It's been W's all round for season one. No release clause has been activated. Top six football in La Liga. And we made the semis of the Champions League. That is mental. And to be honest, boys, looking at this team, there's only a couple of positions we really do need to focus on before we can take Sevilla to the next level. But before we go any further, if you enjoyed this video so far and want to see more content like this, leave this video a like and smash that subscribe button. So we're now into our second year in charge of Sevilla. And as you can see, I have put quite a few players on the transfer list. The way I see because we can only buy players by activating their release clauses, we need as much money as humanly possible. And whilst it is a shame to see some of these players, don't get me wrong, it is necessary for what we need to do in Season 2. But taking a quick look at the team, to be honest boys, all over the pitch we are pretty solid. Now obviously the strongest part of the team is our front three, so we're going to leave that alone in Season 2. But our goalkeeper, our defensive lineup, our midfield definitely could do with being improved. And we do have 105 million in our budget, and that is significantly higher than last season's, but once these players have sold, we'll have an even better budget. And after managing to sell all those players, we've now got 145 million euros and that money I can definitely put to good use. Now I want to focus more on the goalkeeper and defensive lineup. I know I said I wanted to improve our midfield, but right now the defence and goalkeeper is a little bit more important. If we could just bring in a better goalkeeper and maybe a better centre back, I reckon we'll be absolutely golden for season 2. Now as you can see, I found three pretty decent goalkeepers, but there's a problem with each and every single one of them. Gregor Goebel's release clause is over 144 million, so I'll be blowing all of our budget on one player, and I'm not really willing to do that. Now, Gulashi's release clause is 22.9 million, but he's 34 years old. At best, we'll probably get one good season out of it. And Courtois's release clause is just under 130 million, and logically, boys, it just doesn't make sense to blow all of our budget on one player when we can only activate players' release clauses. So as much as I want to bring in a goalkeeper, I reckon we're going to have to wait one more season before we can do it. And that means we've just now got to focus on our defence and maybe potentially bringing in better midfielders. But I found our centre-back, Arit Alistondo. He is 30 years old, granted, but he's 81 overall and his release clause is 42.4 million, as you guys know. The worst thing is his contract is running out, so we probably get him normally for about 18 and 19 million. But because we've got to activate his release clause, we've got to pay more than double his actual market value. But boys, I gritted my teeth and just paid the release clause for 42.4 million, making Alistondo a Sevilla player. And that leaves us with 101 million in our budget. And to be honest, I'm sick of cherry picking where I want to improve the squad. I feel like we should just spend the money on a player that will actually improve the team as a whole. And boys, I found a player that will definitely improve it. Julian Brandt from Dorman, 28. He's 85 rated and his release clause is 86.1 million. And for the first time so far in this video, I'm paying a release clause I actually think will be worth it right now. And with that, boys, Brandt's release clause was activated. We brought him over to Spain and that is our transfer window done. And now the team looks like this heading into season two. And I know I've switched the formation back to a 4-3-3 attacking variation. I'm very indecisive at the minute what I'm doing. Also know is though, this team looks pretty solid all things considered. And maybe season two, we actually win some silverware. One thing I've also done is made sure our best players release clauses are sky high. So if clubs do come in for them, we are going to get a lot of money for them. Now we are in the Europa League in Group F alongside Feyenoord, Bodo Glimt and Shamrock Rovers. And if last season 
in the Champions League, we made the semi-finals. Theoretically, we should be making the final of the Europa League this year. So season two is done and dusted with Severe. And as you can tell from the budget, someone's release clause in our team has unfortunately been activated. It's just a question of who. It's Yusuf in Nashry, boys. He's gone to Newcastle United for 100 million. He's 85 overall, man. You can't write that, can you? I mean, it was bound to happen at some point. I thought 100 million would have been more than enough to keep him, but apparently bloody not. But we once again finished fifth in La Liga, so overall, boys, it didn't make too much difference one way or the other. And we actually made it to the semis this time of the Copa de España, only losing to Osasuna 3-2 on aggregate. So, so far, boys, we've actually done better without Yusuf and Nasri. We're heading over to the Europa League. We made it through Group F undefeated, and we cruised to the round of 16. But we got battered by Marseille 3-0 on aggregate. Okay, in Europe this time, we didn't do too well. But looking at this starting 11, it's slowly starting to come together, even though we are very restricted on who we can actually bring into the team. But I am worried about Marcus Acuna. He's going to turn 34 next season. He's treading on thin ice as it is with that overall. Maybe we'll have to let him go next year. But stats-wise, Lucas Ocampos and Julian Brandt carried us this year, man. Fair play to the pair of them. Don't get me wrong, Yusuf and Nestri leaving the team was a massive blow to us, but to be fair, we have done pretty well without him. My only concern is we won't see this 104 million on top of the budget we'll get next year, and if that happens, I'll be bloody gutty. So it's now our third year in charge of Safir, and as you can see from Marcus Acuna's development plan, his stats are now only going to go down. Now, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't bother selling him. I'd just let him stay in the start at 11, then drop him as a sub once we get a better left back. But he's worth 54.5 million. With us only being allowed to activate players release clauses, we need as much money as humanly possible. So I have decided to sell Marcus Acuna. Now, a couple of clubs did come in for him for massive sums of money, so I'm quite interested to see where he actually went. And he went to PSG for 82.7 million boys for a 33 year old that is a banger of a deal for us and now we've got 230 million in our budget and boys with that amount of money even with us activating release clauses we can massively improve this team now obviously we need a better left back because Acuna's just left us and obviously we need a better striker because Yusuf and Nasri left us to join Newcastle United last season but our main focus right now is bringing in a better striker and bringing in a better left back and boys I have found the left back we need Tio Hernandez he's 88 overall and his release clause is 117 million and his market value is only 88 million and considering he's an 88 rated player even at 117 million we are getting an absolute bargain and for around 30 million more than what we sold Marcus Acuna for we have just got one of the best left backs in the world right now and that leaves us with 105 million to bring in a striker and he is hoping we find someone in Yusuf and Nasri's level luckily I found Tammy Abraham from Roma he's 82 rated 27 years old and his release clause is 50.6 million. Now, I know I've used Abraham quite a lot lately, but he's literally the best striker I can find with a release clause, so I've literally got no other option. And boys, for just over 50 million, Tammy Abraham is now a Sevilla player. And now look at how good this team has become, man. Obviously, our defence and goalkeeper still does need work, but overall, boys, we have made some massive improvements. Don't get me wrong, I do want to improve this defence, but if we can bring in a better keeper, I'm more than happy to leave that defence like that for at least one more season. But the best goalkeeper I could find and could afford is Peter Galassi. Granted, he's 35 years old, but he is 84 overall. It's not my first choice, believe me, but right now with the budget we've got, he's the best we can do. And boys, with the signing of Peter Galassi from RB Leipzig, that is our transfer window done. And now the team looks like they're going into season three, and I think it's time we raise our expectations for what this team can actually do. I think it's time to aim for Champions League football once again. The team is more than good enough, in my opinion, and I think it is so much better than the Europa League. But in the Europa League, we are in Group C alongside Braga, Ghent, and Apiol FC. Now, last year, we got humbled by Marseille in the round of 16, but this year, I want to be winning this competition, no ifs or buts. So, we are at the end of Season 3 with Sevilla, and as you can tell from the budget, it looks like we've been lucky and none of our players' release clauses have been activated. And heading over to the league, we actually won La Liga by one point, being Real Madrid to that top spot. We've gone from placing fifth in the league twice in a row to winning it. That is absolutely incredible. And we've also made the quarters of the Copa de España, only getting knocked out by Real Sociedad. Heading over to the Europa League, though, we topped Group C, undefeated, winning all six of our games, man. This is looking pretty good. And in the round of 16, we beat Fiorentina 3-1. This is looking pretty promising. And we get our revenge on Marseille, beating them 5-4 on aggregate. But we lost 2-1 to Napoli in the semi-finals. That is a bit gutted, I ain't gonna lie to you. I really wanted to win the
the Europa League. But look at this star in 11, considering the fact we've been so restricted on transfers, we've done an incredible job. You know, Kompos, Brandt, Sam Ibram, all three of those have carried the load this year, man, gained over 70 goals between them. So we won the league, we got to the quarters of the Copa de España and the semis of the Europa League. I'd say this has been the biggest W so far. And what makes it even better, this team is finally back in the Champions League where it belongs. Because let's be honest, boys, whilst we couldn't win the Europa League this time, we are way too good for that competition. But the last time we were in the Champions League was in Season 1 and we actually made the semi-finals of it. So hopefully this time we can do one better and make the final next year. So we're now into our fourth year in charge of Sevilla. And as you can see, I have been very busy with the coaching system. If you want your players to progress quickly, make sure that you're on top of this. Because as you can see, mine are sorted and the team is improving massively. Now, this is the starting 11 we're working with right now. But here's the thing. There's a couple of positions that will let us down in the Champions League if we don't do anything about them. Now, the obvious one is the goalkeeper position. Gulashi and Dimitrovic are both 36 and 34 years old. Now, granted, they're both 83 overall. But I guarantee you, by the end of this season, that won't be the case. And if we don't sort this out now, they will let us down in the Champions League. Now, from season one, I've been worried about this defence, but I don't think I have to worry about it anymore. We've got an 85-rated Montiel, 84-rated Bardi, 83-rated Marcao, and 89-rated Theo Hernandez. I think our defence is absolutely sound. It is just our goalkeeper in our right winger position we need to sort out, and I think we are actually ready for the Champions League. In this year, we've got 132 million to spend. Now, bringing in a right winger and goalkeeper for that amount of money, I don't think we'll be able to pull off, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But well, the goalkeeper I'm going for is the goalkeeper I've wanted from day one, Thibaut Courtois. And his release clause is now 81 million, which is dramatically decreased since the first time we saw him. He's 90 overall, he is 34 years old, but he's absolutely one of the best options we've got for a goalkeeper right now. And boys, with the signing of Thibaut Courtois, we have finally solved our goalkeeper problem. And that now leaves us with 43 million to bring in a right winger. And honestly, boys, I don't think that's going to be enough. And I was right, boys, I found Marcus Edwards who's 85 overall, 27 years old, but his release clause is 66.4 million. We're about 25 million off. So this does mean we are saying goodbye to Dodi Lukbakio. To be fair though, boys, he hasn't really been impressive for me at all, so I'm not exactly going to miss him. And we have said goodbye to Dodi Lukbakio for 43 million, which gives us 89 million in our budget, which is more than enough for Marcus Edwards. And boys, that is our transfer window done, as we've just signed Marcus Edwards on a four-year deal. And now the team looks like this heading into season four and i've got to say boys considering the fact we can only activate players release clauses we have done an incredible job putting this team together the likes of 90 overall courtois 90 overall tio hernandez and 90 overall julian brandt i mean we have created a monster with severe and not only do i want to win the league again i actually feel like we can surprise a few teams in the champions league now we've been put into group b of the champions league alongside rb leipzig rc lens and malmo ff but like i've just said i think we're going to surprise a lot of teams in season one we made the semis with a far weaker team so theoretically we should be getting to the final so season four is done and dusted and we've once again won the league title this time by 17 points in the end way more convincing than last year i'm not being funny though boys after seeing how good our team's become i'm really not too surprised and we've so far got the double by beating real madrid 1-0 in the super copper final but we got annihilated by atletico madrid in the copper de España 5-2 on aggregate Jesus Christ. But it's the moment we've been waiting for, the Champions League. How have we done in it? Well, we just about made it out of Group B. Jesus Christ, that was tight between the three of us. But in the end, we do make it through to the knockouts. Where we face off against PSG and beat them 1-0 on aggregate. Boys, we're through to the quarters. And that's where we just about beat Bayer Leverkusen. Oh, it's always a great day when I beat Bayer Leverkusen. But now we're in the semi-finals. We win that game. We're in the Champions League final. And that's exactly what we've done. We've annihilated Barcelona a 5-1 an aggregate and we are facing Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League final. The last time we were in the Champions League we only made it to the semi-finals but this time we're the much better team and much more experienced we have made it to the final. But look at the stats boys Ocampos, Tammy Abraham, Julian Brandt, Marcus Edwards, Montiel they have all put a shift in. But Bardi is injured for the Champions League final I'm so gutted about that man he's our best centre-back. But putting that aside look at the star in 11 man we have done an incredible job putting this team together. And in my time managing Sevilla, we've won quite a lot with them. We've won two league titles back to back and we've won the Super Copa. But now it's time to go for the biggest one you can win at club level, the Champions League. <laughs>
Referee! Oh, Adi Yemi, behave yourself, lad. Now, Dortmund are coming forward. Dewey is on the ball now. Montiel's in chase. He's done him, though. Oh, I don't like this. Great tackle from Markow. Oh, I don't like this from Dortmund. Oh, they're coming forward. That's a fantastic save from Courtois. Jordan is now on the ball. He's going to feed that in. Oh, oh, have we got kind of lucky? Yes, we have. Ocampos is now on the ball. Can we cut this inside? Yes, we can. Julian Brands. Abraham. Oh, no. Abraham! What are you playing at, lads? Barrios is coming forward now. Mark said was just picked up. Uh, oh, this is beautiful. Abraham. Oh, he's, oh, my God. Bro, come on, man. Normally, you ban them away from fun. Abraham's on the ball now. He's found Ocampos. Okay. Let's cut inside. This is nice. Abraham. Oh, this is beautiful. If we can make this. Oh, come on. We were so close. Julian Brandt's on the ball. Now we've got the chance. This is it. Mark Edwards. He's got the pace. He's left stones for dead. Surely this is 1-0. And it is Marcus Edwards. 40 minutes on the clock. He puts us 1-0 up in the Champions League final against Dortmund. It was a beautiful through ball from Julian Brandt. Sets Marcus Edwards away. He's got the pace. He's got the clinical finish as well to go with it. And we are leading in the final. Dortmund are coming straight back up the pitch with Kareem Adiemi. Okay. Oh, okay. I've given him way too much room there. Can we go tight? Oh, that is way too easy. I can't believe I've just let that happen. What am I doing there? I thought he was going to pull it back, but instead he goes up the... What? Okay. Fair play. FC 24. Incredible game. Jordan's now on the ball there. We've got Ocampos on the left-hand side. We could potentially get a goal back and forth. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Edwards to make it two. Oh, Dortmund, you jammy sods. Ocampos is on the ball. Second off. I see that run. Tammy Abraham, come on, lad. You've got the pace. You've got the strength. You've got everything you need. You're clinical. Beautiful Good stuff. Man. Two. Oh, my God. That is a phenomenal save from Dortmund's keeper. I can't believe you kept that out. What a save. Oh, we do have a free kick, though, for some reason. And he's right on the edge of the box. Oh, my God. Now, I am terrible at free kicks. So, let's see what we can do with Julian Brandt. Can we get one in? Oh, ref handball. Oh, come on, man. This is turning out to be a much more difficult game than I anticipated. But we do have the ball with Ocampos. We're going to come back. Tio Hernandez. Oh, I tell you what, though, he's got... Oh, my God. I think that's Kobel in goal, and he is actually phenomenal. We're going to whip this ball in. Ocampos, that's a great delivery. Julian Brandt against his former club couldn't get the header away. Considering we're playing the counter-attacking tactical vision, we have been all over Dortmund so far in the second half. One player we haven't used enough is Tio Hernandez, because look at him. Oh, my God, he is so quick. What a ball. Abraham, put it away. The first time we actually properly utilized Tio Hernandez in this game. He delivers that. What an assist and what a goddamn goal. Tio Hernandez breaks through, splits Dortmund's defence apart with that pass. And Abraham, I mean, he's never missing from there, is he? Gotta admit, boys, Abraham is fast becoming my favourite player in FC24. The guy just doesn't miss. Now it's Dortmund's turn again to attack. Okay, Reyna's on the ball. He's coming forward quite quick. Look at that from I do, man. What a play. Marcus Edwards on the ball now. He's against Sanger. He's leaving him for dead. Look at the pace that Marcus Edwards is showing. Chance to make it three. Can we cut this back? Abraham on his left foot. Oh, my God. I'm telling you now, if it wasn't for Dortmund's keeper having the game of his life, we'd be about four or five one up. I've just noticed we've got like a minute left of this game. Julian Brandt's on. Oh, that's a beautiful delivery. Referee, what's going on in the box there? But it falls to Ocampos. We've got Julian Brandt on the ball now. Let's just keep it. We could find an opening here. Abraham, turn. He's got a bit of room. Hit it. Oh, come on. we still got a chance for a third. Please, hit it. What's going on here? I think that is the full-time whistle. It was the last chance of the game. We couldn't take it. It ends 2-1, but it doesn't matter. We have made Sevilla the best team in the world. And I'll be real with you. This was one of the trickiest and most difficult videos I've ever done. Release clause videos are no joke, and I absolutely challenge you guys to do better than I've done right now. And guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video, because if you did, there's another one right here just like this one.